Hello and welcome to another exciting adventure in the world of home automation. Uh, right, so I've said in my previous videos that I would create a, uh, a demonstration of Event Ghost uh, and some sort of tutorial therein. So that's what this is really. Um, so I'm not going to go through the process of installing Event Ghost, that would be very, very boring, I think. Um, I'm just going to show you a little bit about how it works uh, and how you can create macros to basically do pretty much anything. Um, so this is a quick overview then. Event Ghost to the left is uh, a list of things that have happened on your computer. If I shrink that window uh, and then click on that window there and then Alt Tab to get back again. Uh, you'll see that it's uh, went to Windows Explorer. Uh, I did Alt and Tab and it deactivated Explorer and reloaded Event Ghost. So Event Ghost basically watches everything it can uh, that is going on. Uh, so opening and closing windows I think uh, happen by default to be logged. Um, all other things like if you wanted to perhaps have something triggered off the back of a, uh, a remote control you would need to add a plugin. Um, so on the left hand side is the history of what's happened. If you want to add plugins you need to look at the right hand side. Now you see mine's pre-populated with a load of stuff that I've already created. Uh, yours won't be when you first install it. But it will have some of these things under auto start. Won't have all of them. Uh, this is a list of the plugins for Event Ghost. So one of the most important ones I've added is XBMC2. Uh, and another one is uh, MCE Remote. Uh, so those two things have been added because I want to be able to control Event Ghost using the MCE Remote. Uh, and I want to be able to control XBMC uh, the, the program. Um, so I can control almost anything uh, that XBMC can uh, can have happen using my MCE remote. Uh, now I know XBMC is supposed to do that by default uh, but I had a, a great deal of difficulty getting it to do what I wanted it to do and I wanted certain things to happen when I pressed buttons that XBMC wouldn't give me the opportunity to change. So that's how I got into using Event Ghost in the first place. Um, so I bought a long time ago one of these uh, a Windows remote with a, an infrared transceiver and this transceiver is plugged into my PC and currently receives signals not from the original MCE remote but from my Harmony one which I shall spell correctly so Harmony one remote basically acts in place of the Windows Media Center remote uh, but it's still being picked up by the same transceiver so I created uh, a plugin called MCE Remote uh, by simply going to Configuration, Add Plugin uh, and finding that from this enormous list of things uh, that it's either listening for or can control. So the idea of a plugin, just to reiterate, is to either to be listened to, so Event Ghost can uh, get actions, uh, or to control something, such as XBMC. Um, so I'll give you a demonstration of my remote being detected. I'll press randomly the zero key. So you see MCE Remote MC number zero was pressed. I can then uh, get that to perform any action uh, in accordance with the plugins that I've installed. Um, so I'll give you a quick example then. So imagine there's nothing in here at the moment and you wanted to be able to control XBMC to do a particular function. Uh, I could create a folder called, well in this case we'll call it XBMC test. Uh, and in that folder I can then add macros. So the first macro I'm going to add, uh, we'll, we'll do something simple. Uh, so XBMC2 you see appears here. Uh, I want to open up a particular window, so I'll go to the Windows section. I want it to open the video window. Uh, and I want it to open up the video window when I press the menu button on my MC remote, or in my case my Harmony 1. So all I've got to do is press that uh, key on my remote. You can see it appears there. Uh, and then drag that into my macro. So now when I press MCE Remote MCE Start, or in human language the menu key, it will launch the XBMC2 video window. Let's give that a go. And there you go. So that's launched uh, the video section of XBMC, uh, because that's what we did in Event Ghost. So what I'll do now is we'll add another couple of actions. So when it's finished launching the video window, I want it to... I'll use the gamepad one because I know that that one works. 
Uh, so this is um, an optional gamepad for XBMC. I can also use this same thing to navigate the window up and down and left and right. So I'll say D-pad down. So go to video, press down on the keypad. What you'll probably find is that won't work immediately because XBMC won't be ready instantaneously to go from that command to that one. Uh, so XBMC, uh, sorry, when Event Ghost can be a little bit fiddly. Uh, what you'll probably want to do is add another action here. If I scroll right to the top and open up the Event Ghost actions, I can say wait some time. Wait for a second. Um, so it will do these in order. So I want it to launch a video, launch the video window, wait for a second, D-pad down, and these you can copy and paste. So copy, paste, paste, paste. Uh, I'll copy that one. Paste, paste, paste. Uh, and so you'll see if I execute this now. Uh, it only managed it twice for some reason there. I think my I'm missing one there. But anyway, you, you get the, the idea. You can scroll down through your menu using D-pad down. So you can create macros to um, do pretty much everything. Uh, I used to have one which was for launching my favourites uh, and then uh, going down a couple of the a couple down the list and then selecting that so that when my neighbours were doing my head in. Uh, in the middle of the night and I wanted to get some sleep I could select the waterfall from my favourites just by pressing a button on my remote um, to launch that macro so it would go to my favourites, it would go down a couple and it would select the waterfall sound and start playing so I wouldn't have to switch my um, computer monitor on uh, in order to be able to select that option and have the waterfall start playing um, so you can have macros do literally pretty much anything with XBMC uh, I've also created some for myself, uh, this is a fairly interesting one. I have Steam on my computer, as many of you probably do, and I have a favourite game, uh, which is NBA 2K13. Uh, so I've been enjoying that for a while now, but what I find is, as soon as NBA 2K13 launches, it sticks the mouse right in the middle of the screen and leaves it there, uh, which I thought was a pretty bloody stupid idea, uh, being as I'm controlling NBA 2K13 with my um, gamepad. Uh, so what it did was I said, whenever um, that window is launched, I want you to move the mouse pointer to 1280-720, which basically sticks it in the bottom right hand corner, uh, bottom top, sorry, top right hand corner, uh, and out of my way. So as soon as uh, that window is launched, a little thing came up here, and all I had to do was drag it into here, and I said, wait for 15 seconds, so that it would be uh, in a position where the mouse was was sat in the middle and then move the mouse pointer to one side. So moving the mouse pointer again, it's just another action in here. Uh, so it's not an event ghost action, it's a mouse action. Uh, and this one will be here by default. Uh, and you can do all sorts of things with this, but the most obvious one is move absolute, uh, where you can set horizontal and vertical positions according to where you want them to be. And all you do is you press test, and you'll see my mouse moved to up here um, and then you could apply that so I'm not going to add that obviously I don't want to spoil that for myself um, so there are more important things for me are controlling the light switches so I added the Telstick plugin as uh, many of you may do following watching my videos if you're interested um, so I've got this TS2 plugin which I got from the Telstick website uh, and that basically gives me the ability to control Telstick devices um, so I'll put it under a folder called IR commands which obviously isn't true there would be R R F commands um, but I don't know I just kind of put them there because it made sense to me in my tiny little brain at the time um, so I made it for myself a folder called Telstick commands uh, such as subfolder so you can put folders in folders like you can with Windows um, and then I'll create one called main lights um, and then I started to create ways of turning my lights on and off so if I want to switch the main lights off uh, there is a broadcast way of doing it that comes from my Vox Commando software which I've demonstrated to you uh, before so when I say switch the main lights off it doesn't work <laughs> switch the main lights off Deluminating. there we go 
So what that what happened there was um, Vox Commando sent a broadcast to Event Ghost. Um, so that's dead easy to set up. I can show you that another time if you haven't already figured it out from my previous guides. Uh, but that just sends an Event Ghost action to Event Ghost. Um, and in this case it was this one here. Broadcast to switch the main lights off. And all I did was I dragged that into here to control uh, turning off the main lights. Uh, and the way I added the action was the same way as I did previously. I just went to add an action uh, and in here I just find TS2, that's the Telstick plugin. Uh, turn off was the one I used and then I selected the relevant uh, device from my Telstick menu. So there's obviously Telstick software as well which you'll get used to as a matter of course when you first install your Telstick um, and you get it programmed up to control your light switches and your whatever else it is you want to control via your RF frequencies. Um, and that will build a list under your um, TS2 plugin. And you just select it and say, uh, and then because it's the turn off command, you'll find it turns it off. So I won't create that right now. I'll just show you the existing one. So turn off main lights is already there. Devices main lights, it was the turn off command that I chose. Uh, and obviously, if the lights were on, that would turn them off. Um, so that can also be activated by uh, other means as well. I could obviously put a uh, keyboard shortcut in place on my um, on my normal Windows keyboard, or more likely, I would probably create some sort of uh, remote button. So I could put a button on my Harmony One remote. Um, so I wanted it to be the zero key. I could press the zero key on my remote, which gets picked up there. I just drag it in to the turn off main lights, and then, therefore, when I press the zero key, it will carry out that action. So that's just a couple of the things that you can do in Event Ghost uh, that are fairly straightforward. Um, there are other things. I've got uh, Schedule Ghost running at the moment. Uh, and Schedule Ghost basically just says uh, when a particular time um, comes around, perform said action. Um, so I've created uh, an alarm clock here, um, which does. Well, I did do various things. You can see it's, I've turned off all this macro because I found a better way of doing it. Um, so all it actually does now is it sets the master volume to 11% on the PC. So if my PC had been on 100% uh, the previous evening, it's not going to scream at me to wake up. Um, and then it just broadcasts an event to uh, Vox Commando. Uh, and that will happen on any of these things, either uh, me saying help me to sleep. So oddly enough, it will go from Vox Commando uh, me saying help me to sleep to event ghost uh, and then it will set the master volume to 11% and then go back to event ghost again to say start doing those things um, so I, I discovered that event ghost wasn't as good in some cases as Vox Commando at carrying out actions in XBMC uh, it was more efficient to do some things in Vox Commando and more efficient to do some things in event ghost um, so I can broadcast help me to sleep um, by saying it uh, I can actually control it via my phone so if I press a button on my phone there's a TCP event comes in uh, and it will launch from here uh, or I can have it just from the uh, it happens every morning as a consequence of schedule ghost uh, starting the event waterfall so schedule ghost is a little bit finicky uh, show schedule ghost manager Basically, you you open the plugin from the top, which is unlike all the other things that you've done so far, uh, and you set a time. Uh, I've put the span at nothing because I just wanted to start the event. I don't want it to later stop doing something. I just want it to start doing something. Uh, and I put in the word sh uh, schedule title waterfall. And when I press test, it will have launched a little thing in the uh, bottom left here, uh, and I just dragged it in. And then next time, five thirty in the morning rolled around, that little thing appeared. Uh, and therefore event ghost new to start doing uh, the alarm clock um, macro so anything else worth mentioning in here uh, another handy little thing is I can have certain contexts uh, blank off when certain windows aren't in play so if the XBMC window is uh, brought to the front it starts all the XBMC macros uh, being listened to 
uh, and used. Uh, similarly, if the Windows Media Center window is at the front, then all of those uh, commands uh, become applicable instead. Uh, and similarly, again, if I've not got any of those two windows open, then the desktop is in play instead. And so these things on the remote will do one thing uh, if um, XBMC is open, and another thing if the desktop is in play. Um, so I had to create uh, exclusives that basically said whenever um, XBMC is launched or is on top uh, then make this folder uh, active and make these folders deactive so you probably won't need that immediately that's more advanced stuff uh, but it's fairly handy you can see it working if I open XBMC and bring it to the front you'll see the two windows blanked off there uh, and XBMC became applicable instead and if I minimize it you'll see the desktop becomes applicable instead uh, and if I open Windows Media Center and shrink it down you'll see that the Media Center one becomes active instead so slightly more advanced uh, if anyone wants help setting that up just give me a shout uh, I think this tutorial has gone on long enough though uh, so I'll end it there, if anyone's got any questions post them in the comments uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already um, and that's about it, I'll see you next time